name is Tracy Kirsten and I live just outside the city of Durban on the sunny east coast of South Africa. I enjoy reading, running and walking and spending time in nature. I'm an avid traveler and I've been fortunate enough to visit 40 countries around the world and have been on each of the six continents. I've been an educator for more than 30 years, having taught biology and physical sciences to high school students. I currently teach at St. Mary's Diocesan School for Girls, which is a sought after independent school in Kloof in KwaZulu-Natal. It is a well-resourced school, and it's a school which actively encourages its girls to be curious and to think critically. I love teaching girls because this is where I feel I have the greatest impact as an educator. I am passionate about empowering girls to believe that they can do science and to embrace science with confidence. I want to inspire girls to understand that science is actually not a boy's domain and to help shift the gender stereotypes around science. There is a fairly well used phrase, science is all around us. And there's a reason it's so well used because it's absolutely true. Our living, physical and material world is quite simply driven by science in all its many formats. Food production, water purification, medicines, transport, communications, power generation, building materials, you name it. Almost every aspect of our daily lives involves science. Learning science develops students which are curious and who are, have the ability to think independently and analytically. And these are 21st century skills which are going to be needed to help solve the problems and the many challenges that are facing our world today. I believe learning science in school should be a collaborative, collective and a cooperative endeavor because students should realize that actually this is the only way, working collaboratively and working together, that we are going to be able to come up with solutions for some of the problems facing mankind. We are working towards a common goal, and I believe we should do this in a shared, active learning experience. The advice I can give to make science interesting and relevant in the classroom really falls under one umbrella, moving from a more teacher-centered classroom to a more student-centered classroom. Instead of teachers standing up and uh, explaining a scientific concept in front of a class, I believe that much of science learning has shifted in pedagogy to embrace more inquiry-based learning principles, whereby the teacher guides learners through their own investigation process by asking the right kind of questions and encouraging learners to continually ask questions of their own and thereby taking ownership of their learning. I believe that the key to successful science learning is to introduce a new topic with something exciting and stimulating to make the students wonder. In other words, to bring curiosity back to the classroom. In some education circles, this exciting and stimulating um, way to start off a lesson is called a hook or a phenomenon. Once you have piqued the students' interests, you then let them explore in a common experience generating their own ideas about the phenomenon and perhaps putting their ideas into their own words and using their own vocabulary. Only then, after the students have explored uh, by themselves, should the teacher explain 
um, what is going on scientifically using the correct terminology and vocabulary for the first time. And often we as teachers do this backwards. We stand up and uh, explain a, a scientific concept using all the correct terms, um, but we forget that the students, these are absolutely foreign to a student. They don't understand them and they very often can't relate to them. And once we've stood up and explained the scientific principle using scientific terms, we then allow them to engage uh, and explore. Um, I believe that if each uh, new concept is introduced with a fun exploration task so that the students can see the real life value in what they are learning, they will spend, they will be more invested um, and, and prepared, be prepared to put more time uh, and effort into it and thereby take more ownership of their learning. Um, in other words, students should always be reminded of the why. I have two examples uh, that I did um, to introduce new concepts. So the first one, I decided to introduce Newton's first law of motion with a fun challenge outdoors. I had a team of competitors and a team of spectators who were going to observe what happened. So the competitors each stood behind a stool and uh, on the stool was a plastic ice cream container filled to the brim with water. And on my go, they picked up the container and walked as quickly or walked ran as quickly as they can to uh, an end point on the course where I abruptly said stop and the students had to stop. Now the spectators noticed that when the girls picked up the containers and moved forwards, the water sloshed out backwards. And when they abruptly stopped, the water sloshed out forwards. This was such a fun way to introduce inertia and was the springboard for animated discussion for the rest of the lesson. And it crystallized the understanding of other aspects of Newton's first law, other applications. Another um, new concept I introduced in this way was chemical equilibrium, where I also had two different containers of water, one representing reactants, one representing products. And the girls would transfer different volumes of water from one uh, container to the other and graph the results. And they got the most amazing chemical equilibrium graphs, which really helped them understand the principles of dynamic chemical equilibrium. Um, I believe that we are lifelong learners and whatever your style of teaching has been or is, I don't believe it's ever too late to, to make small changes, to make a science more interesting and relevant and more inquiry based for uh, future students and for current students. Circumstances in different societies around the world can provide challenges for educators to master inquiry-based teaching and learning, even though they may strive for it and desire to make a change in their classrooms. The two biggest challenges, I believe, are resources and time. Um, and I'm going to deal with resources first. Many schools around the world are financially challenged and simply do not have the resources that other schools have to provide good quality inquiry-based um, education. And to this end, I believe that um, teachers from well-resourced schools should collaborate and reach out to other teachers as much as they can, they can to share their experiences so that teachers around the world can actually move to this way of science teaching. Uh, it also takes a lot of time to prepare for good um, and plan good inquiry-based lessons. And uh, many teachers around the world are um, really, really pressured with um, curricula and standards that they have to adhere to. So I've got a, a bit of advice for both of those. So first of all, if you are a teacher that is wanting to move to um, inquiry-based learning, my advice is to do it slowly in small incremental steps. Choose one topic uh, in one grade to start off with. Uh, I also advise um, following teachers 
uh, on social media who are embracing inquiry-based learning principles and to follow hashtags on social media. There is so much out there on inquiry-based learning and there are many educators around the world who are willing to share their resources uh, and help as much as possible. I also advise um, once you have done one grade and one topic, it can always be tweaked the following year and thereby it doesn't take so much time as it has the previous year. Um, I started this one grade, uh, one topic at a time, and I've been intentional about doing this for the last five years. And I've honestly seen a difference in my students' attitudes towards science. And it was also brought the joy back to my classroom. I believe it is in very small modifications to our pedagogy that we are going to see the biggest differences in the outcomes in science education. And as I've showed you with the chemical equilibrium idea and the Newton's first law of motion idea, it doesn't, you don't have to use fancy and expensive equipment to actually be an effective inquiry-based learning um, teacher. Um, another example is that over the years we have collected literally hundreds of different colored bottle top, plastic bottle tops, different colors and sizes. And what we decided to use these for is when we introduced molecules and compounds um, to the grade eights, we got the girls to model different compounds using the different sizes and the different colors uh, of bottle tops to, to represent different types of atoms in the compounds. And the students loved it and it really helped visualize um, how compounds and, and molecules are constructed. So the key here is to start small. Um, I believe that courage and creativity in the classroom are learned and they can be improved with practice. And I believe it was Confucius who said, the person who moves a mountain starts off by carrying away small stones. Small changes, big differences. Small stones, big mountains.